What's up guys? Welcome back to David's Feed. In this episode, we head into the inner city of Bangkok to the Cobra Temple, a place of a dark backstory, but where an incredible phenomenon occurs. This is really incredible. Deep within the thriving metropolitan city of Bangkok lies a small and innocuous temple. Most people probably wouldn't even look twice, and daytime visitors come and go without a second thought. However, when nightfall comes, something very, very special occurs here. Through a friend of the channel, David and I had caught wind of a Bangkok temple which worships cobras specifically. While snakes being revered is not uncommon, there are rumours that this temple is home to a number of wild monocle cobras which live here in harmony, even being fed daily by the monks. Such a concept seemed highly unrealistic to us. But on our very last day in Thailand, we hooked up with Chris Wheat and decided to visit and give it a shot. Okay, so we've just gotten off the taxi. We've arrived at the so-called Cobra Shrine. Uh, I have no idea what to expect. This could be a complete fail of a video. We've been told by some locals that apparently there's wild monocled cobras here, which come to the temple at night because monks throw eggs and meat out for them. That sounds a bit dodgy to me. I'm not sure if we're actually gonna see anything. Um, really excited to go inside. I'm gonna go inside already and have a look. Yeah, that actually looks like there's people looking over the edge right now. Crazily, we ran up just in time to see the body of a huge monocle cobra disappearing into the bushes, instantly confirming that the rumors about this place are indeed true. But as our intro was cut short by the arrival of this cobra, I didn't get to tell you about the morbid origins of this temple. The story begins with a developer who planned on destroying the wild area next to the temple to build houses on. The night before development was planned to go ahead, a cobra visited him in his sleep and pleaded with him to not destroy the habitat where the cobra and its family live. He decided to go ahead with the development anyway, and tragically, that same day, he reversed, hit, and killed his own child. Overcome with grief and coming from a very spiritual culture, the man was convinced that the cobra had cursed him and the development was cancelled. The temple was henceforth dedicated to worshipping and living peacefully with the cobras. So earlier, the monks must have been like tossing down the chicken drumsticks and eggs, but we didn't get here in time and I think our flashlights scared them off a bit. So we're gonna like wait in the dark for a little oh, while and right hope they come there's back. There's one right oh. here. Perfect. Oh wow, there there's is. There's a really big one. Oh, there it is. See the mid body. So there's one down here right now. We've turned our lights off and we're giving it a chance to come out because he's kind of sitting by the edge of the grass poking his head out. But I think us shining our torches around a lot is kind of scaring it. So we've taken our lights off. We're gonna wait a bit and see if it comes out into the open so we can get a better video of it. Oh, there it is, there it is. Where? Where? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. We hadn't been here long at all and already we'd seen more than one massive cobra. However, all our observations so far had been these fleeting glimpses at distance. They all seemed too shy to come out. More than anything, we wanted one to emerge out into the open where the monks leave the food, but it didn't seem like this was going to happen. 
That's right, a different individual had emerged and was beginning to swallow one of the large eggs scattered around. Getting to see one feed was what we were really hoping for, and here it was, unfolding right in front of us. Of course, this cobra does not feel threatened at all so it is not hooding up, but you can still clearly tell what species it is by the huge venom glands which make the head look so white. Also, the monocle pattern on the neck, which looks more like an elongated oval when the snake is at rest, is still visible. It may seem weird to see one eating an egg, but wild monocle cobras are highly opportunistic hunters and will eat almost any prey available to them. It's absolutely fascinating how providing a constant supply of food in a particular place has led to one being able to feed wild, venomous snakes akin to how one would feed birds or fish. Due to the nature of snakes, one would have thought that a symbiotic relationship between them and humans would not be possible. When the snake was done eating the egg, it seemed like it was going to consume another one. The rapid flicking of the tongue which you can see is highly indicative that the snake is on a search for food. However, the cobra did not eat another egg. Instead, the snake raised its head to inspect the surroundings and began to move towards the temple and us. This gave us an incredible view of the cobra in full, something we did not expect. We were all astonished by the size of it as it clearly measured over 1.5 meters in length, way longer than the monocle cobra David and I had caught in one of our recent videos in Tran. Soon, the snake retreated fully under cracks in the concrete base of the temple, where it probably lives. Incredible to think that several huge monocle cobras live beneath the temple dedicated to them. This is really incredible. I heard about this place and I thought it's probably going to be a bit of like an urban legend where maybe once or twice someone had seen a cobra, but this is really not what I was expecting. We came here within like five minutes. We already saw two monocle cobras just right next to this shrine here. Incredibly hard to believe I've been living here for so long and I haven't seen one. Look at the road right here. It's like super busy in the middle of traffic and just five meters away there's a cobra feeding fancy. All right, we were actually able to get special permission to go on a walk around the premises with our torches to look for more, um, provided that we don't harm the snakes in any way, of course, because the snakes here are holy. They're being worshipped by this shrine and the people here. So we're just going to go on a quick walk around, see if we can find some more. All right, so we've just off. spotted another python. It's heading off. I'm going to hurry up and catch it real quick. Decent sized one, although he's not very big. That's a good one. Yeah, it's very skinny. Chris, you might want to go in there and give him a little hand, perhaps. Oh, it's got some like albino scales on the head. Are you sure it's not nose rub? It looks like nose rub. It, I thought it didn't because it was like completely there's not just elbows. <laughs> yeah, it looks like nose rub to me. See? That's Whoa. Interesting. So we were expecting or <laughs> hoping to find more monocle cobras here. We walk in about five feet and there's a sapyphon so in front really of me. So it really is like a snake temple in general. They have a lot of snakes in this one plot next to the oh, temple. I do see it has a tick right on its snout, which I would like to remove. She's a bit calm, actually. She's so shiny, though. I'm just going to carefully... Lara, is it okay if you turn the light off, please? Get her. Thank you. There we go. 
All right, so I've just got her by the head. I don't want to stress her out too much. I'm just going to quickly go about removing this tick, and then we'll get going. Let me get a close up. I wonder where the rub came from. Let me get the tick out. Sorry. There we go. We good to let go? Let me just get a zoot close in on those teeth. Before you let her go, she'll take a picture with them. Okay. wonder where the nose rub came from. That's very interesting. All right, so we didn't mention this earlier, but this is actually my last night, and I have to catch a flight in like two hours from now. I love the so photos. Thank you. We're just going to let it go real quick. It's trying to constrict my arm. There we go. Put it right back where we found it. Come on. Off you go. Now let's have another quick few minute look around if we can find a cobra. And then I'm off to the airport. So this was a really fun evening. I never thought we'd actually see the cobras. Unfortunately, on our little walk around the premises, we didn't see any more. We did find that retic though. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Definitely unexpected. So I'm guessing there's a whole bunch of species that are really common around here because of the food and also the eggs and stuff that they throw out probably attracts rodents. So it was definitely a really cool thing. Also, I've got a flight to catch in like under two hours now. So we've got to run off to the airport. Make sure you go check out Chris's channel, subscribe if you're not already, it's well worth it. And, and also follow Lara's stuff too. Follow me, I'm a car fan. <laughs> yes. yes. Alright, so till next time. Let's go.